And it was just reported by FloridaPolitics.com that our very own Miami Mayor Ponzi Postalita, Francis Suarez, uh, around Memorial Day, will be announcing that he is throwing his hat into the ring to be President of the United States. And Kellyanne Conway, of course, working for the Donald Trump campaign, has already said that he might make a great uh, vice president for on the uh, Trump ticket, which I think is a little bit ludicrous. I think I think Marjorie Taylor Greene is going to be the vice president. But um, how perfect would it be to have Francis a Trump Suarez ticket? I mean, I well, how do you well? How would you vote? I mean, you're going to have Mike Pence in the race. You're going to have Donald Trump in the race. You're going to have Ron DeSantis in the race. You're going to have Francis Suarez. You've got Nikki Haley. Uh, already in there. Um, you've got um, Vivek Ramaswamy is is also uh, running. Who would you vote for in a Republican primary, Roy? I would uh, write myself in. I would vote for myself. The third Republican primary? You think you have a shot in a Republican primary, Roy? I'm progressive, so no. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Francis Suarez, what are his qualifications for this position? I think first thing you have to understand is that he has um, he's the mayor of Miami. He has uh, very, very few uh, powers under the charter. And what powers he does have under the charter to serve as the uh, chairman of the city commission, he doesn't do. To veto bad, illegal, and unconstitutional legislation, he does not do. He basically has just made himself a cheerleader and fundraiser, not for the city of Miami, but for himself and his uh, and his clients. Oh, I, I forgot how prophetic that <laughs> That actually oh was. Oh, my God. Yeah, thanks, Andrew Streeter. I feel like Andrew made this, Streeter made this happen, is what I fear. But I think you have to understand how he governs as a, a, a mayor in this city. So to get a sense of it, you really just need to tune in to any a city commission meeting. But here's a fun clip. So let me see if I understand this. I don't understand the second item, but I... I to put what up for RFP? Well, let me call you Lord Mayor so you get even happier. Listen, be respectful. And you, can, and you can understand. Be respectful. I am being respectful. No, you're not being respectful. That's from my uh, not from being respectful. England. All right. Be well, respectful. I'm about, I'm about to bring this meeting respectful. to a close. Then, then, then be, respectful. Be, be respectful. Be respectful. You know what you need to do? Be respectful. Well, I am. Gentlemen. Be respectful. I am. Don't, don't yell at me. Trying to leave. Don't be respectful. Don't, 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 don't yell at me. Be respectful. I'm fine. Don't yell at me. You're going to be respectful. Gentlemen, one you're at a time. Talk about being respectful you're going to be respectful. You've been doing you're today. going to be yeah. respectful. Well, you are too. You're going to be you respectful. Are too. You're going you to be respectful. Right. You are well, going to be respectful. Touch, right? You are going to be respectful. Oh, oh yes, you are. Yes, you are. Done. I'm you're going to be respectful. Like a 3 p.m. You forgot rule. you're not a strong mayor. You oh, lost 65 percent. That's got nothing to do with it. You had nothing to do with it. And that's what I'm going to do with it. It's fine. You lost a strong and mayor. This by six not because of you, my friend. To a close. So not because like of you. Mayor. Not because of you. Trust me. All right. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Good night. For your advocacy. You're welcome. And your service. Have we a are bringing day, this uh, commission meeting to a Mr. close. Mayor. We are finished. You will respect my authority. <laughs> so, so this is what the city of Miami government actually looks like. This is how it actually functions. And Francis Suarez is going around calling it a Miami miracle. Uh, it is an absolute fraud. Uh, to say that this guy isn't ready for prime time, he's not even ready for the Saturday morning cartoons, uh, Francis Suarez, as as you can see uh, here. And and this is how it goes every single uh, every single meeting. And Francis Suarez has taken to not even showing up anymore. He doesn't even bother to do the job he's getting paid very good money for because the charter of the city of Miami actually allows him to have outside employment. And so he focuses more on those more lucrative job opportunities where he gets to basically exploit his public opposition for private profit uh, and, of course, raise money for his presidential campaign. He just received a million dollars from the major DeSantis donor, uh, Ken Griffin, the CEO of hedge fund uh, Citadel. And he just spent the entirety of F1 weekend here in, in Miami uh, partying with over $30,000 in free food and tickets. And he refuses to say who paid for them, which is possibly in violation of state ethics laws. Uh, but he doesn't care because nobody really calls him out on this. He gets away with whatever he wants uh, because Miami. And in a, in a city, Roy, where the uh, median household income is $47,000, this guy gets over $30,000 in free food and tickets in one weekend and refuses to say who is, who is I don't want to say paying him off, but who is comping him and who is paying for this and who is trying to perhaps curry favor 
uh, with Francis Suarez. He won't say. But here's the thing. I don't think he survives scrutiny outside of the Miami media, who has handled him with extraordinary credulity over the last like 14, 15 years that he's been a first a city commissioner for two two terms and then um and then a That's a fine. I, I know. Oh man, hang on. Do yeah, I have a couple of bucks on you? Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> Some cash. Uh he has been handled with credulity by this local press over the last fifteen years, eight of which he was a city commissioner, uh four uh five of which now he's been uh the mayor. But when he appears on national TV, sometimes I can't even watch. You know how you get, like, embarrassed for somebody, like, that you can't even watch it yourself? People think I have schadenfreude. Like, I enjoy watching him embarrass himself, but I, I don't admit. It's like I just I cringe so hard. I, like, pop a blood vessel. There were different. Let me interrupt real- you, sir. Do you really not know? Do you really not know what the reason is why you haven't um, seen the CDC oh. guidance front and center? You, you, can, you can tell me what the reasons no? are, but. I think from my perspective... I, mean, I just read the papers. I'm sure you do, too. Yeah. You're a mayor of a huge city in a hot spot, and it's stunning to me that you haven't read the public reporting that the vice president is using public appearances to uh, squash CDC guidelines or diminish them when it comes to the debate around public school openings. You surely have read public reports that the CDC has been cut out of patient reportings from hospitals that have hospitalized COVID patients. You surely, I've spent time in Miami. I know you get the New York Times there. They've had stunning reporting Oof. that HHS and the CDC tried to sound the alarms to the White House. Uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to try to get you some better phone numbers, but Ooh. sir, you must be aware that the CDC is trying to help people exactly like yourself. So this was in 2020, like peak pandemic. I guess Francis Suarez must save a fortune uh, not going to s and dungeons so we just can get off on him being humiliated on national television. He looks hurt. Like, by the way, if you want to get an idea of how President Ponzi Postalita would handle a domestic crisis, that was him peak pandemic in 2020, going on TV totally unprepared and getting dressed down, and rightfully so, by Nicole Wallace. Uh, so that is President Ponzi Postalita on domestic uh, policy. Um, hey, Roy, how do you think he'd handle foreign policy? Bad. For, for a long time, I think it was Carl Hyacin who joked that Miami's like the only city in America that has its own foreign policy. And back in 2021, during uh, the uh, during Cuba's Patria y Vida, uh, back in 2021, during Cuba's uh, Patria y Vida uh, uprising on the island, uh, Francis Suarez, I don't know why the mayor of Miami would be chiming in on serious foreign policy matters, but he goes on to Fox and he suggests totally seriously, he even shocks the anchor that we should bomb Cuba. And what should be being contemplated right now is a coalition of potential military action in Cuba, similar to what has happened in both administrations, in both Republican and Democrat administrations. In Republican with Bush in Panama, they deposed Noriega, and that country had peaceful democracy for decades. And you had interventions by by Democratic presidents, uh, you know, taking out Osama bin Laden in Pakistan. It's a a sovereign country where they took out a, a, a terrorist that probably saved thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of lives, and President Clinton in Kosovo uh, intervening in a humanitarian issue uh, with airstrikes. So there have been many, many opportunities uh, in the history of- Are you suggesting airstrikes in Cuba? (laughs) What I'm suggesting is that that option is one that has to be explored Mm -hmm. and cannot be uh, just simply discarded as, as an option that is not on the table. Um, and, and there's a variety of ways the military can do it, but that's uh, that's something that needs to be discussed and needs to be looked at as a potential option in addition to a variety of other options uh, that can be discussed. Yeah. Ay, Dios mio. There he is sitting in Dinner Key Marina in, in the city of Miami talking about missile strikes on Cuba while protesters are, are in the streets. Uh, I don't know what he intends to accomplish other than, like, killing innocent Cubans on the streets of Cuba, but obviously nobody took him seriously, even the Fox, even the Fox reporter. It's like, wait, what are, what are you, what are you suggesting? Um, irregardless, Roy, um, not a serious man, uh, President Ponzi Postalita, not a serious man. Um, this was a guy who, as we know, was a, uh, Imaginary coin and magic bean salesman. He pumped, and I assume dumped, Miami coin, uh, a total shit coin that lost 99% of its value and has now uh, been delisted from the only trading platform 
uh, in the world that was trading it. Um, and uh, he told people in Miami that we were going to that we were going to get a Bitcoin dividend from this scheme. He said that we were going to uh, possibly eliminate local taxes, that it was going to this crypto cowboys boom was going to create high paying jobs. None of those things happened. And at Bitcoin conference 2022, he gave one of, he gave an, a Ponzi pitch that would make Bernie Madoff blush. And this was in the midst of the Bitcoin collapse. And in fact, days after he gave this speech, Bitcoin did in fact collapse. We need to elect pro-Bitcoin candidates. And yes, the next president of the United States has to be a pro-Bitcoin candidate. The second thing that we need to do this year is we need to integrate Bitcoin into every aspect of our society, every part of the fabric of our society. We need to make sure that you can go into a convenience store and buy a Snickers with a Satoshi. And the last thing that we need to do is we need to unleash the macro power of Bitcoin. Bitcoin has the power to democratize and to create wealth for the unbanked and for the poor in our community who are getting decimated by inflation and government spending that has gone rampant. If you have a bank account today, guess how much interest you're earning? Zero. And it's worse than that. It's worse than that because of inflation, someone is sticking a hand in your bank account and taking money out because the purchasing power of your fiat currency, the fiat currency of the world is being diminished. And so we have to lean into this generational wealth creation opportunity so that the poor in our community don't get left behind like they always do when government intervenes. Unbelievable. Like none of those, none of those things is, none of those things is real. None of those things is true. I mean, it's just like a, just a fire hose of, of lies coming from this guy. He's an absolute con man, but I will say his true achievement is that he is dollar for dollar, the most corrupt mayor in the history of Miami. And that is legit. No lie. That's quite, that's quite an achievement. I have to hand it to him, but it's not all bad news. Because, you know, they're always the callers on the hotline are always saying it's bad news on Because Miami. There is some good news for Francis Suarez. He has already secured a very high profile endorsement. And wait till they hear about this in Aventura. You know, I met Mayor Suarez down in Miami and I thought he'd make a, a really good president. There's an endorsement from Kanye West. Kanye has a pretty good track record of, of, of picking people. I see good things about Hitler also. Kanye has a pretty good track record of, of, of picking people. Every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. Kanye has a pretty good track record. I like of, Hitler. Of picking people. You know, I met Mayor Suarez down in Miami and I thought he'd make a, a really good president. I also love Nazis.